So recently, as of maybe a couple of weeks ago, Zach uh, is no longer part of On Scene in an administrative capacity or a photojournalist capacity. Um, there was some personal business between Jeremy and Zach that, you know, we got told one part of the story, but we're not exactly sure, or at least I'm not exactly sure what transpired between everything, between them uh, personally. It definitely, I feel like ever since he, he's, he's been out of the picture, uh, things have been a little bit more quiet within the company. I feel like maybe morale, at least for some of the LA guys, is down. Some guys might feel like it's the right decision, some feel like it's not. Um, but, uh, things uh, definitely need to get fixed, or I hope they don't get worse before they get better, because at the end of the day, Zach was half of all scene. We've got stories to tell, and when one of your main... Uh, I wouldn't say the main source, but one of, one, one of your main um, outlets for the company, for n not publicity, but just for, you know, professionalism and what we do is gone. It's like, well, what do we have now? You know? Our work speaks for itself on the professional level, but when it comes to, you know, having someone out there that's, you know, the, uh, the gold standard when it comes to professionalism in this, in this industry, it's missing in action right now and uh we don't know if he uh if the prisoner of war will come back The team, the guys, they're like, they're so unique. Like, they're such a crazy just group of characters. And I have, to this day, so much respect for each of them on an individual basis. Like, it's, it's really hard to explain. For me, the way it felt for me was like, yeah, they were working for the company, and I own the company, so like, technically they, they work for on scene, but I never felt like that. I felt like we were working together and they were just friends of mine and we would go out and do this crazy shit and have these insane adventures and the world would talk about it. The world would talk about our adventures and we got to talk about our adventures and we got to hang out and do what we love doing and make an actual difference at the end of the day. That's what I loved about it. And each one of them was so talented and so skilled in, in different, they each had their own like little different thing that they were like an absolute expert at. And you were just like, oh man, if I need to know about radios, I call so-and-so and you're like, holy crap. And they just know like everything about it. That to me was something you can't buy. And some people call it family. Some people call it, you know, camaraderie. I, I don't know. We, I, I know that it's something special. I know that those words get close to defining it, but it, it, it was something different. And I don't know if it's because of me, and I, I don't ever see myself as that, 
Like, I didn't see myself as the glue that held that together. I thought that was just the universe. I thought that was just who we were. And then now that I'm no longer a part of it, it's it's actually painful to see that my, that my um, poor choice and and my poor decisions and um, and trusting something and someone that that didn't have my best interest in mind could lead to hardship and pain for so many people. I think that's what hurts me the most about about the guys. But no, the, the what we had going on and and who those people are and who they are to me even to this day they're. They're really a, a special, special group of people. And I, I don't, I know that, that it's there. Um, it's just crazy to see that it just doesn't, it, it almost like, I mean, you've, you've described it as like it, it went away once I left. And I, I didn't think that that would happen. And here we are. And I don't, you know, I don't know what the future is going to bring, but I would love to see that again. Because that was, that was something, like with a team like that, the way that we felt and what we were doing, you can do anything. You could literally change the world. And, and we were trying to make it a better place. And that's, that's all I could ever ask for. And to find people to do it with, like that were as cool as they are, like that's, that's all anybody could ask for. so close-knit that we almost knew what one another was doing and you know we we had this system that worked very very well with respect to Metro Los Angeles and that is whoever is working Metro LA is essentially the conductor because Southern California news would be like a, a full-blown symphony or a full-blown orchestra and whoever is operating in Metro Los Angeles needed to be the person, needed to run point, needed to be the quarterback, and needed to schedule move-ups. So if they were going to be extended on a call, then they would bring whoever's in San Gabriel Valley or whoever's in San Fernando Valley or whoever's in South LA, bring them a little bit closer in so that they can extend into Metro while still covering their own areas. And, and it would give us added coverage. And it also gave us the ability to beat our competition out. And it gave everybody their own territories. It gave everybody their own responsibilities. But it also gave everybody larger opportunity to cover Metro Los Angeles because of how busy it could get. And it regularly got so busy that we would have whoever was working in Metro on a call for an extended period of time. And you'd have somebody from outside the area running calls in Metro. So you'd have one on a static call and another person running all the others. And, uh, you know, that, that teamwork was, was incredible. That's what, that's what put us over the edge. That's what, that's what literally separated us from the other companies. I wish that things were different. I wish that Zach was still here. I wish that Steve was still here. I wish that things were exactly the way they were when I first came on with Ansi. I mean, they had everybody, every, everything was locked down. Our hits were up. We were really successful I mean the guys used to compete against or like they would argue again argue with each other about where the boundary lines were because they would you know fighting over calls because we had so many you know we had we didn't have as many guys but we had you know Jeremy John Zach um, Eric ZP I mean they were really hitting LA hard and they were getting every, I mean we were, we were dominating the market it was just almost exclusively on scene TV on every morning newscast you know it uh, yeah so fuck 
When Jeremy and I worked together in LA, we crushed it, like unequivocally. Uh, he worked the Valley and I worked Metro and it was like nuts, it was nuts. We, I mean, not a single story slipped through the cracks. We were on it, like seriously on it. Um, when he left for San Diego the first time uh, and he ended up meeting Anthony Carrasco, which was a good thing, that's a really good thing. Um, yes, it was for the, the better of the company, but yeah, it, it was difficult. I mean, I lost someone that was there. Like we were, we were best buds, man. Like he was there for me. I was there for him. Like we were, we were the yin and the yang. It, it was more than just them being coworkers and being leaders of the company. They were best friends. They were out doing stuff or climbing rocks or, you know, hanging out. And they're literally best friends and they're so young too. I mean, we had a bunch of guys are older than them, but when the, uh, the issues with sex started to arise and the, uh, I would say the neglect in the company, the, the lack of uh, effort in the company, uh, Jeremy had to do what he had to do. So he, he would go from working five days a week to four days a week to maybe working one and a half days a week. And uh, he wouldn't take phone calls, wouldn't respond to emails, would leave things hanging for months on end that would get unresolved and unattended. And Jeremy had his hands full because he was the CFO. He was handling all the financial responsibilities, which meant he was doing all the invoicing and billing to the stations. He was managing the books, doing all the payroll, making sure that, making sure that, you know, our rent was paid, our bills were paid, and our photographers got paid, and, you know, and, uh, he didn't have the ability to take on any more responsibility. He was already overwhelmed with what he had. He had to step in, kind of help the company out, make sure that, you know, because at one point the company was falling apart, and I wasn't making any money out there, and I was simply wasting my time and gas, and competition was eating me alive almost every night and there was a point where I just did not want to work with Von Cena anymore because I felt like there was no support for me. Um, Jeremy and Brent and Anthony had had sat Zach down on a couple of different occasions and pointed out the problems that were going on and what was needed of him in order to rectify them and Zach could make changes immediately and he would implement changes and and every, everything looked great on paper and everything looked great from the effort that we were seeing from Zach. And unfortunately, it was only a matter of time in a very short amount of time before the pressure was off and Zach reverted back to this, the same old behavior. He really still did take care of me whenever I needed help on stuff. And he was a great guy, but... Um, other people in the company didn't really see that, and uh, I mean, I see their arguments too, and it be, kind of became mystified of, well, is Zach good good enough to even stay with us, or is Zach gone? And the, the ultimate decision was, well, Zach had to depart on scene, and it was unfortunate. I mean, I was, I was pretty sad about it. We had a conference call with a large group of us and Zach was unwilling to take responsibility for his behavior. He was unwilling and incapable of suffering the consequences of his actions. And it had gotten to the point where there was no possible way that we could proceed as on scene TV with Zach as the CEO and Jeremy as the CFO. And we had to ultimately choose. And we had to choose whether, you know, we had to choose, basically we had to pick a, we had to pick a side. We were stuck in a situation where we had to pick which side of, you know, of, of this we were going to back. I'm, as much as I feel like Zach didn't have the excitement for doing this job anymore, I think that he... He really did care about his guys 
Um, and so I think that the neglect that he had towards not keeping up with the guys and making them happy wasn't speci like specifically towards them, but just like he wasn't in love with doing the job anymore. Like he didn't have that spark. But what sucks is that Zach used to, or when I had my, my, my like my fire, when I lost my car, Zach came down. He drove down from Los Angeles through, like, gridlock traffic because of the fires. And he, he came to my house, and he took me to my car to see what was there. And, I mean, like, Zach was a good guy when I, when I didn't make it to the academy. He was the first one to call me and say, Anthony, you'll always have a place here. Like, I, I don't think that Zach was a good manager, but I think that Zach, deep down, like, he, he was a good guy. I think that he had good intentions, and I don't know. It's just, I, I go back and forth because there's just so much about the whole situation where I, I feel like, like, one minute, I'll, I'll be like, you know, Zach brought on all this onto himself, but the, on the other side of it, I'm like, you know, Zach had this company, you know, he built it for the past... Like all of his adult life, he spent putting time and effort into this company, and now it's just gone. I, I mean, there's, I don't know. I, there, I have a lot of mixed emotions about about what happened, and I don't know which one really weighs weighs it out. Which you know, which way it sh it, it should have gone, but I mean, it, I don't know. It's just hard because it, it's something that that at the end of the day, it was something that between Zach and Jeremy. And I had to pick the person that was more consistent than the person that got back to me more and the person that I felt cared about my best interests every time that I talked to them. And that's why I went with Jeremy. So he, quite honestly, because he'd return my phone call. Like, when I called someone, and I was, and when I called one of them, Jeremy's the one that would, that would call back. Like I said, I don't think he should have been in charge, should have just owned the company and then just got paid for owning the company, for getting it to where it was. You know, if you didn't want it, but it was almost too late for that. Yes, so it's I think it's partially Jeremy's fault because well, you know when I think it should have happened is when Jeremy ran away from his problems and went to Houston. I don't think he ran away. From yeah, he did. He wasn't happy here. He wasn't happy with Zach. He wasn't happy with where LA was. He yeah, knew that there was but, money being made. So, so instead of doing something to fix LA, he went to Houston because he knew that it was making more money. Because he, because when he, so he's the owner of the company and he can't make it work in LA. So he's going to go to Houston to where he can make money. Instead yeah. of instead of trying to make something work here, he's like, I can't deal with Zach. I can't deal with all this that's happening in LA. Well, Zach thinks that he can do it. I'm just going to let him let him figure it out. I mean, and I'm I. You know that I like I supported Jeremy. But like, I thought that was your ringtone. What? That sound, but that, that Mexican howl. Yeah, when you took off, it was uh, it was pretty tough. We never really talked about it though, and that's probably one of the one of the <laughs> big issues. Communication is key. Um, as someone who works in communication, you think I would know that? Um, but yeah, the uh, when he left, and then he yeah he ended up going to Texas and. I did support that. I do still agree with that, uh, supporting what he was doing. But he just kind of stopped communicating at that point. So, but when did you feel that your relationship with Jeremy and the company is like? When did you, did you get the feeling like this is this, it's going to end, or when did you feel like your your and his relationship was no longer going to continue? I couldn't give you an exact date. It kind of deteriorated over time. And he, him being so far away, I mean, I hadn't talked to him or seen him in a while. And then um, he ended up coming to California and uh, just before my 30th birthday. And he said it was because uh, he couldn't work with me and yada yada. And yeah, I was going through a lot of, lot of tough stuff at that point, but you know, all he really had to do was just be a good friend and just be there for me. That's all he had to do. And it probably would have worked out. I was pretty depressed at the time, so I didn't really fight it. And uh, I don't know, I, I ended up signing something that I shouldn't have signed, and that's uh, kind of screwed me for three years. 
three years not being able to do what I love to do. What I've done for 10 years before that. You know, we finally let him go. But during the course of that, it had really, it had really adversely impacted my relationship with Zach. And, and it really harbored a lot of mistrust um, on both sides. You know, and, and while that was going on, Zach was slowly and consistently checking out more and more and more from the company. And he was focusing on Shot in the Dark, and he was focusing on this pet project and this, and, you know, and, and all of these other things that were on the side. And, and he, was, he was losing focus of what was most important to us as a company, which is making sure that our bread and butter is, is, is intact. Doing Shot in the Dark, I, I really, Shot in the Dark is the first thing that I've done on camera, uh, in front of the camera. Um, I, you know, I'd done other stuff here and there, like background stuff for friends who have production companies, but nothing, nothing quite like that. Um, so, and that's not who I am. I'm not the guy that like seeks out attention like that. I, I don't need to be on camera to be happy. I, I really don't care either way. I'm happy filming. I'm happy working. I'm happy creating. If I need to be on camera to tell a story like with this, we're getting super meta right now, but to tell a story like this or to showcase something or, or if, it's, if it's required of me, then yeah, of course. Shot in the Dark for me was something that I needed to do to right the wrongs that were done by the movie Nightcrawler. That was my main inspiration for that. And I knew that if I showed myself and my team that people would be like, wow, like these guys are actually pretty respectable. Like they're not what I thought they were on Nightcrawler. And that is the majority of the messages that I got were people who were like, hey Zach, like incredible work. You and your team are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. And I knew it would be good for the guys. And I knew it would be good for the company as far as exposure. And I knew that it would help us to find other like-minded people. That That's the main reason for doing it. And I knew that it would be good for the guys, but um, it ended up not being good for me <laughs> in some ways. I mean, it took a lot out of me. It definitely took a lot out of me. It was disheartening because Jeremy, you know, the best friend of Zach, had to do what he had to do. He had to uh, stop this neglect and um, bad stuff from happening and basically cut their friendship in half and decide that, you know, um, the company would have to be the uh, better option in this instance of uh, friendship versus professionalism. That's what happened, and it, it hurt because, you know, it, it just, they're so happy together, and now it's like they're, they're enemies in a way. I, I personally haven't talked to them about how they treat each other, but I can only imagine just having your friend turn your back on you like that. Um, in fact, that's probably what Zach is thinking. Um, it's just... He had to, Jeremy had to do what he had to do, and it's unfortunate. It, it's not my company. Like, that's, only, that's the only reason why I feel like I shouldn't have done it. Even though, like, I agree with it, it, like, and what, what did I do? I said, yeah, guys, if you're going to go with someone, go with Jeremy. Like, I didn't tell Jeremy, like, hey, you need to get Zach out of it. But, like, do you do that? What? Well then, what did what does Zach think that I did? Like, yeah, Jeremy told me it was not like like hey, like I'm going to do this, because like they're not gonna they weren't gonna be partners. So either Zach was gonna take the company, and I honest like I had no faith in him, or Jeremy's gonna take the company, and we've had the most profitable quarter since they bought the yes. since they bought the company from us. I think. Um, I don't think it's up to any of us to fix. I don't think it's up to Jared to fix. It's all up to exactly the fix. But what am I supposed to do to make nice eyes? Do I need to make nice eyes? I don't think you can. Had, had Sack put a little more effort into the company, um, I'm sure this company would have been great and you would have been pushing in a better direction. And it's just unfortunate. But we're, we, what we have to do is rebuild, you know? We were at such a low point, and now we're, we're kind of building back up to our former glory that we were uh, about a year or two years ago. Um, 
and hopefully we can continue to grow. Um, and you know, I mean, the future we all know. If things could happen. Things could change. We'll we'll see what happens. I mean, um, hopefully nothing bad happens because Zach was great, and uh, I I don't want anything bad happening to Jeremy. That'd be absolutely the end, and you know, it's not something we need. So, you yeah. know. Just a really unfortunate situation all around. It was heartbreaking. But, you know, it was also probably the best decision that we as a company could have made. And it was probably the best decision that Jeremy made. And we've been... We've been operating and functioning at, like, at, a, at a level similar to what we were at several years ago. As the result of us, uh, of Jeremy and Zach parting ways. What hurts me the most is the map in chronological order of, of, a, of a great relationship between two guys breaking down. Like, just breaking down from a professional level to an emotional level and to a... Really personal level. Down to the point where Jeremy actually was friends. Their friendship? No, introducing people to Zach. Because like sense, Erica. When did you feel in your mind that you started changing? I think it was after Erica died. Yeah, after uh, after Erica died, things kind of changed. Um, she passed just before the sh we finished filming for the show. And what happened? Erica was a mutual friend of Jeremy and I's uh, that I was dating. Um, pretty seriously and then on and off for a while and um, she ended up passing away in a motorcycle accident uh, April 17th 2017 uh, around 8 a.m. is in the morning so she um, yeah kind of kind of rough to go through that but first time I would had someone that close to me pass like that and then we got into a fight the day before so it was the whole thing was just really shitty. It was just a really shitty situation. And if she had survived that accident, yeah, who knows where I'd be right now? Who knows? So it was really, really tough to go through that. I remember one of the last scenes I was actually with uh, Jeff on the freeway. And I don't know if he remembers this. I'm sure, I'm sure he remembers it. Um, but we were at a motorcycle fatality. And I just like broke down crying on the freeway. And I'd never, that had never happened in my entire career. And that really freaked me out when I was at an incident doing my job and my personal life was affecting my ability to, to gather news, that really fucked me up. Because it made everything personal, and it's not. It's, it has nothing to do with me. And it was, uh, that, that was a big changing point for me. So, it took a long time to kind of get back to normal after that, but uh, yeah, that was, that was tough. And then, Everybody calling you all the time, trying to get things done or answers for this or that or the other thing. And then uh, not having Claire around was tough too. Um, but yeah, when, when Erica passed away, um, that, that moment on the freeway was really, really tough. And then not having Claire there at the office was even harder because she dealt with a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I, I think, and then, I, you know, I think Jeremy blames me for that whole situation. I think he blames me for it to this day. So that kind of sucks. Your responsibilities as as a CEO, as a boss, as a manager, as a field operations officer, officer, whatever. If that was what you thought in the back of your mind somewhere that caused you everything you ever loved, you're going to shy away from it, right? It broke him. Yep. So you think that doing this job makes him resent doing this job because he's doing it so well at first that it ruined the love of his life and now and he just he resents it yep. yeah well i mean i i, I, I didn't think of it that way but i've always thought that he was just burnt out on it no. like he didn't sound excited to do this anymore like he didn't want to go out and work he didn't want to answer the calls when he did work he he was always aiq like he never wanted to 
Like he, 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 like he obviously didn't want to do this. This is burnout. What you see in front of you right now is burnout. This is someone that's tired of not getting paid by the stations. This is someone that's tired of his stories not being seen, not even being looked at most of the time. This, this is burnout. What you saw was a breakdown because it affected him at every level. You know, regardless of what happened, uh, this situation with Zach and, and Jeremy and the company, Zach leaving, Zach not being a stringer in LA anymore, him leaving, whether it was his choice or not, was just a huge disservice to the industry because with him, there's no one else like him out here. And he's one of the few veterans that just went to work and got things done. Now, unfortunately, the way I, I've, I've been seen is that the veterans are more concerned with expansion and it wasn't, it's not strategic expansion. It's just, let's just get as many bodies as we can out there. We go, just reiterating what I said earlier, just, just, just get as many bodies out there with cameras with no experience and let's put out garbage video and kill the industry. And that's what happened. At least with Zach, Zach put people in his place when they needed to be put in, in, in their place. Whether they were people in the company or not, People were afraid to work when he was out, and he's not out anymore. And now it's just, it's just a free for all right now, and it's 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 completely frustrating. How did it feel to lose something that you built? Oh man, that's uh, you know, I I have um, I have a lot of, I go I go back and forth on this, and it's it's more so toward the the later perspective. But initially, I felt like I lost. 10 years of my life's work and I was nothing and, you know, just completely decimated. And, uh, it's not, it's not so much the money. Like, yeah, you lose, you lose money in the process, but I can always do something. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm talented enough to kind of just do anything and be good at it. I just losing something that I was so emotionally invested in physically, emotionally, financially, and then to just have it just taken from you like that by somebody that you trusted, uh, yeah. it's hard to explain that. It's really hard to explain that. Um, but with that being said, sitting here right now, today, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I've learned so much, not just about myself, but about how people work through this whole ordeal that I realized that I didn't lose 10 years worth of my life. I gained another five years of experience in that time period. That's what I realized. And I'm going to be applying that to everything I touch from this point forward. So if anything, it's helped me be more successful in the end. Was it a lot to go through? Did it suck? Yeah, it's like getting your heart ripped out and <laughs> and watching it bleed out in front of you with a knife in it. it. It's the worst feeling in the world. And then losing someone that you loved and cared for tremendously at the same time and then losing someone that was your best friend and losing your company all at the same time, that's, uh, that's tough. That's really tough. And... Would I have done things differently? Yeah, there's, there's things I would have done different that, that I know now today. But, um, you know, if I saw him today, I'd thank him because it's helped me to see how much more powerful I could be. And it's helped me to understand what I can suffer through and what I can go through and still come out on the other side. And that makes me even less afraid of failure.
Center, approximately across the street is Hideaway Lakes, and it appeared that a uh, pickup truck going eastbound on Lilac Road struck uh, and killed a cow, and that was in the road. Is this your first dead cow? I don't know. I think so. It's not my first dead livestock. Uh, I've, I've got um, a dead horse before and a dead deer, stuff like that. And luckily, normally they're really stinky, but uh, because it, it rips their stomach open. But this one seems to be all intact. I feel really bad, Uncle. You feel bad for the cow? I feel bad for the cow. <laughs> you, you think the cow's gonna make it into the dock? Oh, well, the cow's in the dock for sure. <laughs> you know, we have cow in. We have cow. Also, oh, it's not cattle. It's, it's, cow, it's, it's a cow. cow. You okay, should have sorry. a counter, like a little tally, for every time somebody goes, "Hey, is this gonna make it in the dock?" Or is it just me that says <laughs> that? That's just you. <laughs> It'll just be me. <laughs> ding ding ding. <laughs> I don't want Zach to see this and be upset. I don't want him to be frustrated with, with me. I feel like he already blames me for a lot of it. Unfortunately, when Zach wasn't paying attention, he the, the guys would come to me for things. They would be like, Anthony, what, what, what do I do? And I just kind of became like, not the HR department, but the person that people would come, like whine and complain to. And so I'd get like all, like all I'd get all these things from different people I get so frustrated with them. Like hearing all these all these complaints, I'm like, oh, shit. so obvious. Like what to do in the situation. Like if all, these, if all these people are feeling the same way, it's, it's got to be true, right? Not having him out, even for myself, he's a good backup to have. If something were to happen to any of us, with law enforcement or whatever, any situation if we crash or anything like that, he he would go out of his way to um, remedy the situation any way that he could. And, you know, now I'm basically, if, if Brent's not working, any night Brent's not working, I'm the, I have the most experience with on scene. I'm the, I'm basically as, as it is right now in Los Angeles, I am the second uh, senior photographer with the company. And that says a lot. Channel 7 news right there. <laughs>
that damn getting old is hard. <laughs> like my dad was fond of saying, it ain't for pussies. Nope. My last video was a 223, and now it's March 2nd. Jesus. Because uh, obviously the viewfinder was uh, like broken. He didn't adjust the uh, the viewfinder, the nut on the inside for tension, so it's really the uh, the tilt on the viewfinder is really loose. Oh yeah, I had that issue and I had no idea how to fix it. But I just dealt with it for like but, um, two years. Back of Bowman knows how to fix it. Who else? Who else am I gonna go turn to to fix it? Are you gonna go to Zach? Or do I pay JVC to fix it? Hey, Jamie, see the face. Don't go to Zach. Oh my God. Oh look, there it is. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Those officers are gonna be so mad. <laughs> did you did you hear them talk on the video? He's like, here's here, here's a video for Channel Seven. That was weird though. If something bad ever happens, and not that something this stuff happens bad all the time, but when, and, and, and it's, it's gotten a lot easier now, or, you know, straight away from this now, but when, when Zach first left and something bad would happen, like a guy would get into a crash, or, you know, somebody would need something, like, my first instinct was to call Zach. Like, like, this, this, that, that, that's who to call. Um, but, I mean, not with the company anymore. And that instinct is now, you know, I mean, you know, we have to take care of each other. You know, we, we've got to have each other's back out there. We, we won't have Zach to come rescue us, which is good. I mean, it's made a lot of people grow up. But you know, half of our team now doesn't even hasn't even met Zach before. The, this company has completely changed as far as like how it operates since Zach has left. I mean, yeah, we have the same name, and we're still on scene TV. We're still, you know, we still have the most people. We're still providing the most consistent coverage, but it, this, this company, how it works. If, if Zach were to come back right now, he would be totally confused. He'd be like, "What? What? what what's happening? What, what, what? Why are we doing it like that?" You don't have to follow Zach's rules anymore. So I decided not too long ago that I was leaving. I was gonna leave. I tried to hold on as long as I could, but there was there's been no money in this. Basically, I've been paying the company to work. I mean, they don't have to pay for anything. It's not like they're paying for gas. I commute an hour to 90 minutes every night, and spending hundreds a week in gas. And so, um, and for me, not being successful, not making any money, not getting any hits is like like an artist who isn't fed you know and you know a lot of things have changed in the company Zach left however you want to <laughs> there's no communication nobody ever gets back to me and it's not exclusive to Zach yeah Zach dropped the ball a lot and I, I'm not trying to talk shit at all but it was this is the whole thing of like I think I felt like Zach was more of a cheerleader and more even though he wasn't around he was there was still a presence there. You know, she would often get frustrated. And, you know, I'd talk to her on the phone and, you know, she would just tell me all these things. And, you know, I, I would nod in agreement with all the things that she's saying because a, a lot of her grievances about this job are true. And I feel like she would always get screwed over the most, whether not company related, but just in general. And, you know, I feel like she got the short end of the stake a little too late and, you know, it kind of pushed her over the edge. It just 
was upsetting. I just felt let down because when I started, I was so excited about this company and the dream that Zach shared with me is what he wanted to do with this company and how he wanted to um, change, uh, I guess, change the face of media in a way of instead of embellishing and creating drama and fear, he wanted to tell the truth and from the, the perspective of the victims and, and the people involved. And so I was all on board. I fell in love with that mission statement and um, and I thought, you know, he's the coolest guy I've ever met. And so again, shit happened and eventually he left and so it felt like it just there it just feels empty. It felt empty. Yeah, I honestly I, I don't I don't blame her for leaving. If she if she wanted out, she got out at the perfect time because the way the industry is going right now, it's just I'd like to say that the the golden age of first stringers in Los Angeles has it's unfortunate, but it, it has come to an end. Um, there's so many people now running around with cameras and scanners that have no idea what they're doing, no incident safety training whatsoever, and it is just killing the professionals and the profession itself. If you have a bunch of inexperienced people running around scenes, and then it pisses the cops off, and then everyone has to get pushed back because they can't play favorites. You know, it obviously is all about money. If I'm not making money, then I'm nobody in this company. So, um, yeah. And I'm not trying to be like little violin, you know, feeling sorry for myself. I just, I think being older and the them being a lot younger and, um, you know, they're extremely smart. I, I'm not, I don't have the intelligence, but I have the life experience. Like I've been to places that a lot of people haven't and um, bad, good, um, indifferent, but I've walked all levels. And so uh, there was just this kind of thing where it was, I just, there is not, I didn't feel like, I want to say I didn't feel respected, not that they had to respect me, but um, just have some consideration, I guess, you know, for people's circumstances. Yeah, Austin, you know, I feel bad because, you know, sometimes, you know, she's relatively new to all this and, you know, you know, Zach's not around to train her and, you know, she just gets thrown in Metro, which I still have difficulty doing. I've been doing this forever now. Spending all this money thinking and being told and really believing that uh, I was going to do okay with this company. And, uh, and then here I am with all this equipment and just swimming in debt and not able to pay, you know, my insurance got canceled and all this stuff. And it was like, um, and then the continued of like, what's wrong with you that you're not doing well with this company? And why aren't you, um, showing up more and I my thing was I kept saying is I can't afford to show up like I can't afford to drive out here I have no fucking money and so it was like kind of I think they thought it was my excuse to to just kind of be flaky but I mean I commute more I commute the longest than anybody I mean I, the farthest so you know she gets thrown in metro she's in the valley you know the radio language you know if you're not from around here you don't know where the streets are. Look it up on the map. And it, the combination of everything and, you know, getting beat by competition because she always got beat by competition. It's like, I, I, I don't blame her at all for leaving. I mean, you know, at some point you need to find your out in this industry and, and she got hers and, you know, good on her. Don't no, there's no, there's no ill feelings there. I, I'm actually glad she got out. There's just so much emotionally in this and feeling like I failed. And that's why I held on so long because I just wanted to succeed. Like I just, I wanted to do well and it's, um, and I wanted to do well for them, like the company. And um, it just didn't happen. Five years ago, when we started this documentary, I saw myself going either way, either being moving on to a different career um, or 
or, or staying here and being on, on the precipice of changing careers. So I I think that in the next five years, I, I hope that my, my plan is to not be doing this anymore. I want to have a, a, a steady job. I want to have something that's sustainable. I, I hope to have a, a, a career in law enforcement, but that's, there's nothing guaranteed. So I'm, I'm, I'm widening my horizons to just something that's more sustainable. I would love to go into law enforcement. I would love to you know, work in the community that I know, that I've worked in so far. I want to work in a city that I've grown up in. Um, I, I want to give back. I want to. I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of something where I can act upon something. In this job, yeah, you can show things and you can change. You can make a change by by revealing things and telling stories. But I want to be hands on in the middle of it to be able to to help someone. So I want to branch out from this. I want to do something else. Like a drunk driver thing or something? Maybe. Uh, no one went to the hospital with the driver, so... I mean, it's, it's anyone's guess as to what happened. Um, I mean, it's visual, but it's not that visual, but... You know, we got nothing else going on tonight. He's gonna back up. Get a stabbing. I think we talk about this like every six months. How how cyclical this this whole job is, and right now, you get your high points, and then you get a uh, you get a trough. Right now, we're in a deep, 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 deep trough. It's probably the worst it's been ever. Um, I just looked up back at my uh, archive for. July, and I think there's maybe five, six stories. Um, there's a there's a couple of stuff that I missed during the day, but you know, can't win them all. But July was definitely the slowest month in a very long time. It started out very strong. I had two big stories: uh, the Neptune's net uh, stabbing, and then the uh, the seven year old girl shot in Port Wyneme, and it just died after that. I just needed to be busy again. I I would rather be busy. I'd rather be all night going from one thing to another than just sitting in my car wondering if something's going to happen. I don't want to just sit there and be like, you know, if if I get one thing and then, you know, if I'm there for 45 minutes or an hour, or however long it's going to take for that story, or if I'm in the middle of the story and I have to run somewhere else, that's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more fun and, uh, it's a lot more fun than just, uh, sitting there for six, seven hours on end, just, uh, waiting, waiting for nothing to happen.
a new EMS policy for the county is that they have to do CPR for 40 minutes now before they can pronounce someone dead, so we might be here a while. So one of the issues with rolling up the scenes like this is that all the radio traffic, you know, the fire department was on scene, but they were staged out because they, obviously the crime was in progress, but they didn't know if the suspect was still on scene, if there was a weapon still on scene. So they parked out and it looked like there were, they were, they were telling dispatch that there were still um, some belligerent subjects on scene. So they wanted to hang back. Uh, the victim wasn't getting the care that he needed. Um, and that may or may not have contributed to his demise or his eventual demise. And so with all that being said, you know, I'm coming to the scene. It's not, if it's not safe for the fire department to enter the scene, then I'm not going to go in. I'm going to wait until it's clear for them because if they're not clear to enter, then that means that law enforcement hasn't arrived yet or they're still dealing with the belligerent uh, people. Or if there's a suspect, if there's a guy with a gun or a knife, hell, I don't want to be there. And then not just that, but then when you get there and it's, it's safe to go in, then you have to deal with uh, friends and family that are upset. Um, they may be upset, confused. They see a camera, they might get angry. So you just you just never know what people people are capable of when they're uh, emotional, when a loved one has just been, uh, I guess, brutally murdered. Because I mean, I mean, this is this is definitely my first uh, throat slashing in a high-profile place. So you, know, you just got to keep your eyes open. And even even once you've dealt with one guy asking who you're with, you know. You don't want to tell him the company you work for. I'd say media or the news. Thankfully, some canine officer was right next to me. He answered for me. He's media. He can be here. Uh, but then when you get... And then the next uh, issue is when you're away from the action, you're away from the police, the bystanders, you don't know who's there. You know, it's, it's a, is the actual suspect among that crowd? And then, you know, when I was shooting this, I had two guys walk towards me, and I don't know if they were walking towards me, but they were just walking by. They came straight at me, and they just crossed in front of my camera. I don't know if those guys were going to come and do something but you know you don't want to do anything you know you, you start something here i'll just scream help and you know if there's five cops around so you just always got to keep your uh eyes peeled ears open i think that's the expression you know, this is such a weird angle because it's on an incline Okay, you want me to walk you over and walk me? Don't be adding nothing about car related stuff, man. I don't think you guys feel me. There's a fucking piece of shit. Anything related to car, you have to get it right now. Fuck you guys. 
First, uh, first call of the year last year was a, was a homicide in 2019. Dave, why are you so weird? So, yeah, unfortunately, the way things are going this year, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be that busy this year, but summer's coming and we're going to be opening up soon. December 2018, hide them. I don't have that, um, that's not on my uh, computer anymore, it's on my hard drive. I'm pretty sure, uh, 2018 was really busy too. He's literally the strangest human I know. Oxford and Ventura are, so are definitely, uh, Ventura and Oxford are definitely the busiest. Uh, there's rescue landing right there. times two. We got two camera angles of the same load. You see that guy who was burned. <laughs> They've got a knockdown already, but go in there and see if you can get a shot of the, the overstock. Just go right to the gate at the front. It's, it's literally the first unit right there, right? The second story. What do you think, Gabe? Just go back there. Nothing burger. It's, uh, it's not a story. There's no uh, no flames. Did you get were there flames or no? No, no flames, no story. Your cup stick out the back out fucked up. Yeah. Did he smell? Yeah, he was cooking for a while. Yeah, yeah. like you like something in there. It was an overstuff yeah. so he couldn't escape. And then it looked like he was uh Roger. He's good, Jason's good. He's out here, he works all the time. One other person in the dock? interact with our guys. You like it? Miss it? Seeing him kind of be in charge or kind of be like, hey, you're missing this spot or you're missing something is weird because it's something that I haven't experienced in two years. It's just kind of weird. Into this guy right here, like that's that's important. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem that important, but that's a huge difference. That is a huge difference. Watch out! Oh, um, I could probably give you a little bit more info if I do take a look. Okay, okay, I'll be I'll be right out. Thank you, sir. You want the camera? What happened to your old camera? It burned up in a fire, but it technically wasn't my camera. Oh wait, no, no. Oh, it's just the camera I've always seen. I thought you had another uh, Panasonic that I could Jason, borrow. the uh, battalion chief, he's going in. We already talked to him. When he comes out, he's going to give an interview. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go feed it out as a part one then. Just so Loud Labs doesn't um, beat us on the feed. And then... It's only it's already uh, 330 though. No one's going to give a shit. Well, it's an overstuff and you got... Two victims, I believe. It's holiday, though. Uh, it's one transported. Holiday. Yeah, it's still holiday related. I mean, they got tinsel on the fucking page. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying it's still. Oh, it's if still it's a holiday, Christmas tree, holiday news. 
no, no, of course. Well, uh, well, I'm, well, no, no. If, if this if this is holiday related, like if there was a Christmas tree in there, but they're not the dry stuff, enough yet. Well, if you got it early December, December first, yeah, it could be. A lot of people get their trees December first, so I don't know who does that, but people do that. Where's your uh... Anthony? Why, are why you wouldn't so, I use this? Why are you so chubby, dude? I, I got so fat. I'm, I'm down like. I'm down like. Is it, is it muscle? No. No. <laughs> I've I lost like no. I've lost like 16 pounds in the last like month and a half. Why does that battery look like it doesn't belong on there? Might be secret weapon. Is it a 190? Does it have a USB port on it? It does. And you can charge your phone? Oh. 240. Wow. It looks so chody though. It does look, it looks silly. It wouldn't be like a little, a little. But this will last me for like a month. And yeah. I have the 100 watt lamp on it, I need it. That's not LED, that's just a regular. How, how much was it? And then get the super spot. That battery is expensive though. It's like a five hundred dollar battery. Yeah, but like if you want, if you need to light up the top of that tree, yeah, you can light up the top of the tree. I just wish it was LED, dude. Those those use so much power. Are these? They do. Oh, that's why I've got the two hundred and forty. They, they don't have an LED version for that. Well, because Prezi has an LED. That well, I because use. it's disposable, so all the diodes in like a circular yeah, they, they won't focus. You can get these cheap used, right? You want them like rusted? Yeah, you don't want them. Why well, go? Yeah, you can go through. You guys live here? Yes, the apartment. Oh no! I, was gonna, uh, I know. I'm not, I would have done it. I don't know why you didn't do it. Well, that she didn't. Uh, wasn't into it. She's got the kids. Yeah. Oh, dude, she stay was, there and, and look for. Let's stay there and look that way. That looks nice. Look this way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do I have to suck in my stomach? Because Gabe yeah. thinks I'm looking fat. I'll hold it. <laughs> oh, by the way, my uh, like my gas gauge is working properly now. Well, it's because you talked about it. What are you talking about? Oh no, my no, oh, gas no, no, no! Don't get him started. My, he will uh, not, not stop talking about his gas gauge. Don't get him started talking about chronic. Oh, because problems. it gets stuck, right? No, it's no, not stuck. Don't, it's failing. I just said, don't get him started. He's been all night about the well, fucking gas gauge. For him? No, you it's, fix, no. Well, you're like this you're is like, what happens. Listen, when, when, when Gabriel's car breaks, he goes, Zach. When was the last Zach. time you fixed something on my car? To be fair. Okay, when hang on, hang on. Ask you to fix something on his car every day. Yeah. Zach, how do I fix this? Uh, you get a heat gun. I can fix it at the apartment. Can. Yeah, use a uh, hair dryer. I mean, take it off the camera, obviously. What? What? You don't want me to right. put? No, no, no. Take off, <laughs> take it off the camera, and then uh, hit it with the heat gun, and it'll. it'll Why is everything you have so chody? Yeah, it is very chody. Are you trying to tell us something? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't even say it. <laughs> what do you want to do? I shot at the sky. I miss like you so hot. much. I miss you too. They make you feel so warm and fuzzy. Oh yeah, big time. fire. Uh, that we ended up having a total of two patients, uh, one patient in moderate distress with some smoke inhalation, and the second patient in minor distress, both patients were transported over the hospital. Can you describe the type of damage inside? Yeah, the fire is as small and extended as possible. Can you describe the conditions inside? I think that we heard on the scanner, pack rack, pack rack, pack rack conditions. Uh, no, no, we did not have pack rack conditions. It looks like it was a simple, uh, simple fire that was, uh, Ended up being electrical uh, origin. That was good. So normally, over stuff is in reference. I mean, he's saying that it's in reference to the couches and stuff like that being on fire. Usually, it's it's hindering the exit from the building. But you know, that's that's definitely a factor in this thing. But that guy was having trouble getting out of there either way. So I think it's an interesting story. There. We'll see what they think. Though. You like this story? It's like I had like a voice of God in my ear. Pack rat conditions. <laughs> Describe overstep. It was weird having Zach be there and him care about what I was doing. Because I haven't had Zach have anything to say about my work or about what I'm doing in over two years. So it, it was weird like having that kind of interaction with him again. But it's still, like, Zach still doesn't, he's not my boss in any way. He's not, he doesn't own the company that I'm, I'm working for. He's just some guy still. Like, he's, he's I mean, I'm, I'm glad that we're back to being civil with each other, being able to talk to each other, and I'm, I'm grateful for that relationship. But I never had anything negative towards him as a person. It was just with his work ethic and whether or not he was in the right place in his life to to you know run a company but 
Oh, that was weird. I think that's what I've always been fighting, is wanting it to go back to the way it was. I don't know... I don't know if it should go back to the way it was. I don't know if it can. I don't know if the, if the right people are around. I mean, gave, everybody's in different parts of their life. I feel like a lot of people have given up on this career as a as a potential career. I don't think anybody's really taking it seriously anymore. I think it's just a fun thing that people are doing on the side. And before, there was so much hope that this was, you know, everybody's career and this was, what, what, this was it. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's, what's ahead. If I was able to do it again, I would make decisions that were for the benefit of the guys. A lot more, a lot more strong. Benefit of the guys, or like so that you wouldn't lose control of the company. No, benefit of the guys. I don't care about that. I just you want to do the same thing. No, they're different. Very different. <clears throat> you know, I miss it, man. It's it's fun running around like this. I don't call it I know. I kind of forgot. I was like, oh, it's all happy again. Rolling around with the guys, like hanging out with this fucking nut and this guy. This guy's awesome, by the way. This guy's fucking awesome. Um, I love it, man, honestly. I missed it, and it's, it is a huge part of who I am. And it just, it's weird to have something taken and then like having like a taste of it and not being able to really like take a bite. It's like, it's like, oh, you can smell it, but you know, don't touch it or else, you know, go to the gulag. So, it just, it sucks, man. I don't know, next year is gonna be interesting. That's all I know about that. Next year's gonna be very interesting. But there's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, very, uh, very lucky that I have the, the friends and family that I do, otherwise I don't know where I'd fucking be right now. So, there's a lot of opportunity. It's, it's whether or not we can, whether or not we can like take advantage of that and actually make something of it. But we'll see what happens. An old school question. Uh, yeah. Can anybody do this? Can anybody do this job? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. 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 I don't know. But that seems to be the, the current uh, mantra in the industry. I think anybody thinks they can do Anyone it. Anyone with a pulse. Anybody can do it for a month. Yeah. All right. I'll go with a that. Lot of, a lot of the people that have popped up have so, slowly fallen off, right? Yeah. It, it, it happens way too frequently. You'll see some new group of kids with little cameras, even their phones, and two weeks later, never see them again. Like, okay, so, so I was getting my oil changed, and someone, not while I was waiting, someone was, was like, so why is your car like that? And I'm like, oh, I'm a news photographer. And they're like, Oh, do you work for Loud Labs? I'm like, no, I work for On State TV. Do you work with Zach? <laughs> You're like, not anymore. No, I fired him. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> do you think that you've gotten more fame from Shot in the Dark or Patty Mayo? Patty Mayo. But that's not like, that's, just, that's not like, that's like online. I get recognized like a lot more for that show. For Patty Mayo? Yeah. I bet it's younger people. Yes, it's like professionals, like the firefighters and the cops and everybody, they know me from Shot in the Dark. Um, like the average person on the street, they know me from South Bend Bounty Hunters. So what brings you out each night though? What drives you to keep doing this? All of us? All of us, all of you. It's just who we are. It's four o'clock in the morning. For me, it would be the pursuit of the truth because no one else is going to fucking do it right. Well, can't beat no, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, Pursuit this, of the truth. This industry presents you with new opportunities every single day, and you'll never get tired of that. You'll never get tired of meeting new people and seeing cool things. Whether, you know, not everything we see is cool or fun, but it gives you that chance, and I think that's what that's what really brings me back. Every day is different. Yeah. I just think I'm addicted to it yeah, at this point. We're the best, so I mean, yeah. naturally. Well, good to see you. Good night. Do you, you guys feel like you put that side of the business out of business? No, not at all. I mean, that's the goal, though. So why are you so opposite? I don't think we put the stations out of business. Would I like to? Absolutely. With, but with, I don't with, think... With the, with the platform and going directly and having a fucking news network, 
that's the goal is to go after yeah. those guys. We will never come close to taking a company like that out of business. And, and it's sad because the companies will go through our stuff Pick and, and choose. Look at our information that we work hard to get, and then just waltz in and be like, "Ah, oh, hey guys, <laughs> how's it going? Great, thanks." And they're one of them. I would agree with that 100. <laughs> percent I'm just kidding. We'll talk later. Okay. You don't want to hug me? <laughs> oh, look, another one. Oh wait, no, it's the same one. <laughs> Are you gonna give me a hug? <laughs> oh, He's yes. trying again. Yeah, hey, if you want to go. Uh, I feel like you're the most awkward. This hugger. He's so <laughs> weird. Don't touch him. He's weird. He's got rabies or something. Well, I was worried about like touching him <laughs> wrong and him being like, oh, you, you <laughs> messed up the Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you see that? I've never seen him move that fast in my life. Holy crap. So we're in Ventura meeting up with Gabe, who now has a blue crown vic. Because he was jealous of mine. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Are we matching? I am wearing a turtleneck. Are you wearing a turtleneck? It's the Under Armour one. Uh, yes, that's the one I'm wearing. Oh man, we are matching. I was just telling uh, Alex that you, you're starting to look like Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> look, at it looks just like him. <laughs> but you look like older Jeff Goldblum. Like you look at you look like Jeff Goldblum now. No, that's what Stu said the other day. He's like, he was Stu like, Mundell. I love Stu. He's like, you know, you look like a, a young Goldblum. No, you okay? You don't look like young Goldblum. You look like old Go Goldblum, but like today. How do I explain this? Here, have you seen? You gotta see this picture here. I'm gonna hold it up. I'm looking up. Oh, I just I just Googled it. Okay, check this out. Here, look, look at me. Give me like a like a shit eating grin. Can you give me like shit eating grin? Like up, like ah. Uh, uh, open your mouth a little. <laughs> so fucked up or what? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Too much, dude. Oh shit! All right, I'm gonna get some Starbucks. They're closed. You have to go through the drive-thru. Do you want anything? I already got some. What'd you get? Iced coffee. Just a, like not a with caramel cream. with and cream. Five cups of classic. So, what is that? Five. It's one more. Wait, five pumps? And how big was the cup? It's a grande. Show me. Show me. I threw it away. How big is a grande? Show me with your hands. I want. Just show me how big a. I don't know how big a grande is. Show me with your hands how big a gr- Four pumps is the standard, I get one extra. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna get a pumpkin spice something. I think he's the weirdest human being I know, I'm pretty sure. Like, he's the best. Like, Gabe's the best, but he's, he's definitely- Like, Jeff Goldblum's pretty weird, but Jeff Goldblum doesn't have shit on Gabe, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> that fool's fucking bizarre. For real. You've been riding with him, so you know. You know what's up. Alright, what do you want? You got like stickers and shit. Sorry we're all out. What do you want? Camera, what do you want? <laughs> like I'm asking them. What do you guys want? Green tea, ice green tea. Green tea? Oh, Small. I love that. The blended one though? Yeah. The matcha? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Starbucks, what can we get you? Hey Box, can I get two of the uh, matcha blended green tea? You know, you know what I'm talking about. One more time? So I wonder if uh, they're gonna see the car and be like, wait a minute, aren't you the... You're not Gabe. Jeff Goldblum usually comes in <laughs> with, a, with a pterodactyl behind him. He looked in, he's like, it's for a cop. It's like for uh, super troopers. Can I get a large cola? It's for, a, it's for a cop. Like, oh shit, extra spit. No sir, we're not the police. We are crime scene photographers. I'm an ex-crime scene photographer. I just, <laughs> I, I'm just a wannabe now. <laughs> I just go to scenes to look at things. Oh man, how depressing is that, huh? So I gotta say though, it's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell more filming cops, is that okay? So, the, uh, no, Live PD, that's the new one. That's what all the cool kids, the cool kids are on Live PD. If I was like in my 50s, I'd be like, cops. I'll put on the red light. So, it's uh, it, it's weird, like working and, and and doing everything with on scene. I was like super focused, and I felt like everything, like I was looking through a straw. And uh, it's weird because it, in the moment, 
it didn't feel that way at all. It was just day to day, like running the calls, working with the guys, getting the tech figured out, like trying to figure out how to make sure we're successful, you know, a year from now. And, uh, oh, thank you. Perfect stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Take care. So it was really weird because yeah, it, it's it's bizarre. Like you, you don't know that things are like you don't know things could be different until they are different. Does that make sense? So like until everything went down, my perspective was super just like this. Like I was driving around just like, oh okay. <laughs> and then when everything happened, it was just it was like these blinders were taken off and I could see he's gone. Jeff Goldblum is gone. Where'd he go? He's such a weirdo, dude. Fuck, he's such a weirdo. <laughs> I'm gonna call him. Gabe. Where'd he go? He was right here, right? Yep. Or was he ever actually here? We don't, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> for real. All right, I, I don't know why you do this, but okay, I'm, I'm in route. Okay. All right, you're so weird, goodbye. He's such a weirdo. I feel like, no, I feel like he had to be over there, because look at the time. It's 11.14, right? I bet, I bet in his little raccoon brain, he had to be at his other spot by 11.15, otherwise like things didn't work right. Like he had to go home, you know? Had to go home and change or something. He's so fucking weird. What was I saying? Okay, so, having the blinders off, like everything, once everything kind of shifted and like that responsibility every day, like answering calls and like dealing with all this stuff, like once that was gone, it was, it was weird, like I, I felt like everything was realigned and everything was so clear and so much more open. It, it was probably one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had, actually. Um, you good? Moment here, I got you. <laughs> it was actually one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had in my life. After working so hard and being so focused for 10 years and then having that all just like that, like overnight disappear. Um, like it was suffocating in the in the beginning, and then after a while, I'm like, wait a minute, no, like this is fine. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make something bigger and better, and uh, that's what's been going on. So don't want to get too into that though. Can't can't get into the details of that. When people ultimately see this this documentary in it, and uh, I've followed you guys for a while. Um, what do you what do you want them to learn? I hope that this documentary makes people not want to do this. This job is exciting. You have a lot of freedom, but it can be it's full of stress and not like. Not like the normal, like, oh, I know I gotta get to this, this crash. Not, not, not the getting there and getting back and dealing with it, but like financially, am, am I going to be able to make ends meet? Am I going to be able to, um, you know, be on my competition? I just put all this effort into something. Is anybody going to use my footage? Am I doing all this for nothing? And then there's like the stress of, of you know, is, are you going to get your, your stuff, you know, ruined, stolen, um, damaged, burned? I mean, there's so much that could happen. It, it's this is a really this this is a really frustrating career, and it takes someone that's really stubborn and has you know really strong drive to keep going. It's it's not an easy job. It's not it, it's not a fun job. It has fun moments. It has really exciting moments. It has really high highs and some really frustrating, you know, sad lows. If, if you can't find something every night to keep you motivated and stay positive when everything else is is, is falling around you, like you're, it, 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 you're not going to be successful in doing this. And that, that takes a lot. It takes a lot out of you.